loving the same person, feeling that love so, so deeply, you didn't need to forget it, just move on and be like everyone else, this isn't good for me.
Jaren, you ready? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC. I am your host, Jaron Bell, this evening, and we have a fantastic matchup for you here at Friday Night Live Rocket League action. And man, oh man, I could not get any more excited. My main man, Bass from the past, Mr. Oliver Bass, is in the building. What is up, my man? I'm excited to see these games today. It's good to see you again, Jaren. It's been too long, my man. I'm glad to see your pretty face back on camera again, and I'm excited to see all of this start back up here. We've got some really good matches for you guys tonight, starting off with two pretty good teams coming out here, NTC versus Illinois Wesleyan University. Illinois, I believe, is one of the only teams left that are undefeated in this league. That is right, Oliver. Illinois Wesleyan, one of only two. They come in at 6-0, and oh, and Durham College being that other undefeated team. So they face off against an NTC team, NTC team that we have seen here before, Oliver. What are you looking for in this matchup? I mean, NTC still looking to try to make their way into the playoffs as this is the last week of competition here in the regular season. Well, for NTC, this is somewhat make or break for them. They've got a bunch of teams underneath them that also have one win. So if they make a loss here, this is going to be crucial for them throughout the season. Valparaiso underneath them, Hood College underneath them, and St. Ambrose all at one win apiece. So if North Central can't take this win here today, this is going to be dangerous for them. But like you said, one of the only two teams with an undefeated record right now. So they really got to bring their A game to this game here today. Absolutely. And again, like you said, maybe only one win, but the important thing is getting to the dance, getting in the playoffs, because we know across all sports, when you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. And speaking of the playoffs right around the corner, we want to say thank you to our partners that have gotten us this far in this NECC season. I want to say a big thank you to Helix Esports for all they do for us behind the scenes. And of course, our friends at Meta. Pro Gaming. They did our brand new beautiful website. And of course, if you have any arena needs or any arena esports upgrades, reach out to our friends, friends at Meta Pro Gaming. They can help you out. Of course, we thank the NFL Alumni Association and of course our linear TV partner, our friends at ESTV. ESTV will be broadcasting the entire NECC playoffs live on their platform. You can get ESTV on Samsung TV Plus. 
Vizio, the Roku channel, plenty of options for you to download their platform and check out esports action from around the globe on their platform. And of course, last but not least, our friends at HyperX. It looks like my main man Oliver's got his on now that they sent over. But HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming, now comes to the NECC. I tell you what, it is a fun time, Oliver, to be, to be involved in collegiate esports. Yeah, it's a great time right now. We've got a whole lot of games coming up for you guys. In the next couple of weeks, we got even more coming up. Over 30 streamed games for our playoffs. So don't look away. We've got plenty of action coming to you guys. And looks like we got action coming up in just a moment as the teams are about ready to play here. Absolutely. We are right around the corner from action, ladies and gentlemen. And before we jump into that, we want to remind you that you can follow us on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games on Twitter and Instagram for live playoff updates, giveaways, and all kinds of cool information. Here we are. We are ready to get started. We have kickoff and welcome to Friday Night Live here at the NECC. And so far, we're uh, like we say every single week, this first match is just going to be a test of these teams' nerves and their consistency as players. Every single week, the first game is going to be a little bit of a warm up for both teams. Obviously, it's going to be a warm up if From is going to make the. Uh, from, excuse me. Fro, Fro Han? I'm not a, Frau Han? He's not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but not the touch he wanted there regardless. No matter how you pronounce his name, he's not going to be happy with that touch there. And Zerx is 1-0. to zero. Yeah, Absolutely. Zerx with a beautiful follow there in the bottom. And just like expected, looks like Illinois Westland off to a commanding lead here with not even a minute gone. But here's an opportunity for NTC. Oh! Oh my word, a whole lot of opportunities for NTC there. None of their players can make a touch here. Now with an open goal on the other end, Mag is going to shoot and score. Illinois Wesleyan up 2-0 to zero here, and uh, I can't help but feel the only reason they're up so quickly is because of some unfortunate errors off of NTC. Well, and you know, Oliver, we've talked about this I don't know how many times in this NECC season, but the a major opportunity there, they had the opportunity, the great pass across the middle, wide open net, players there to take the pass, just not able to do it. And while we're explaining, Zerks just puts another one in. I mean, this is getting out of hand fast. Yeah, I said it. The reason I mentioned that this is all nerves and trying to figure out how the other team is going to play the first game is because there's usually a team who takes control quickly. Illinois coming in here very quick to the punch, obviously already starting with a 3-0 start. And meanwhile, NTC on the other side still trying to find some footing. They look uncomfortable out there right now. Oh my word! Wow. And Cat's going to get a goal because of it. And Cad, let's, let's watch this replay of this touch because he sends it to the corner, jumps back midline, hits the bottom of his car, puts it in the left corner, and what a one-man goal that was, Oliver. Oh, my word, Jaron. My question to you now is, is what do you think the final scoreline is going to look like here? Because we're not even a minute in, and they've already scored four goals. Man, I mean, that was absolutely a – I mean, that was impressive. I mean uh, – You'd love to see NTC be able to maybe stop another goal here, but as Zerks has control of the ball, I don't know if that's going to happen. Played across to the middle. Oh, big save by Sergeant Dilmack. Back and forth this goes. NTC is starting to gain a little bit of footing here, but they've yet to have a clean possession as everybody off of Illinois Wesleyan have just been in front of them the whole time. Three and a half minutes left here, and honestly, even if this is the sort of gameplay we see out of both teams, this is enough of a uh, enough of padding between these four goals that I don't really think there's much shot for NTC to try and bring this back unless they surprise us here, but they've got plenty of time to try and surprise me, so we'll see what happens. Big demo right there. Zarz Dilmak tries to put one in, but Mag is there to stop that 50 from going to their side. Not a great touch out to the middle, unfortunately, though, and Zerx is going to be all over this. And with a miss on the backboard, NTC's got another player coming in, but still, NTC now in a bit of a panic as they try to get out of their own half. Possession play about to come in as a factor here for Illinois Wesleyan. The shot just goes towards the center, but no one's home. Speaking of no one home, no one on net, but that one's not on target. Gad could have brought the lead to 5-0, but there's no shot there. Or not one on target, I should say. And we get to about the halfway point in this game now. 
Well, Oliver, we've talked about mistakes. It's, it's looked like there's been multiple opportunities here as Cad's going to run down the middle. Oh, and he side flicks him but hits the post. He slide, he slide flicked him and hit the post as the ball is played into the corner. Wow. Heard over and over again, we start to see that Illinois is just trying to take whatever shot that they can right now. IWU doing a good job of just staying on offense the entire time. But the issue is they can't quite get these connects. That one going off the backboard. Cad not there for the rebound. And now NTC, can they score a goal and gain some momentum? Not quite. But that's the big thing. Oh my word, what a demo. And what a save out of Sergeant Dilmack. I was about to say, this is a big thing for NTC. They need to get some momentum here. Those saves like that might put some fire underneath them. Let's see if they can counter. Well, there's just been so many missed opportunities by NTC. And, and that's one of the things, you know, we've talked about. Oh, here's an opportunity, you know. <laughs> Sergeant Dilmack plays the pass off the backboard, off the top, and puts it in. Cade tried to get a touch on it, but just couldn't. Sergeant Dilmack right there to put it in the net. Yeah, and that's uh, as great as that goal was. It is flashy. It is pretty to watch. Every viewer here is probably loving it. But the big thing about that is those type of goals are hard to come by. And with only a minute 40 left, like I said earlier, I think this is just too great of a lead here for IWU for any chance for NTC to come back. The big thing for them now is just gain momentum and see what they can do with that momentum as they head into game two. Absolutely. I, I think you're completely right here. And, and, you know, one of the things that is so tough, you know, we talk about getting a fast start and having teams get control of that fast start. When you play a team like Illinois Westland that is 6-0, and undefeated on the season, uh, that's not a team that you can come into that first game not warmed up and ready to mm -hmm. go. Is You can end up with a 4-1 advantage here with a minute left. Oh, yeah, they had to come into this one completely prepared for NTC. They probably were, but the unfortunate truth is you can't really be prepared for undefeated. There's obvious, It's obvious that they've got a key to victory here that no one has been able to crack thus far. So for NTC, this is a big hill to climb. With only about 50 seconds left, they're going to have to try climbing again in the next game. This is not the one to make progress quite yet. But hopefully they can make the necessary adjustments and keep it competitive here in game two. Absolutely. Ball play. Sergeant Dilmack with a shot. Oh, and a redirect. That was a wonderful pass, pass, Oliver, from Sergeant Dilmack. Lightning sends it out to him. Sergeant Dilmack follows, and Lightning stays the course and puts it in the middle of the net. What do you think about that goal right there? I think that's what they need to start trying to replicate for every single attack they make. That was beautiful all around. They had foresight for Lightning to throw that out to Dilmac. Dilmac to be able to throw it back to him. If we can see this duo continue to be effective, I think there will be a shot for NTC. But like I said, the issue for this game is just the lead got too great too quickly. For as nice as these goals have been, and it's been two uncontested goals in a row for NTC, they just don't have the time to try and put it away. So if they can try and take that momentum, replicate those type of plays, pretty passing plays like that in game two, they'll have a shot here. Oh, not if they Big give away save. momentum. Great save out of Sergeant Dilmack. And again, as we're going to wind this down, this game is this game's out of hand. This game's over. Uh, you just want to maybe kill this ball here. Maybe a play in the air, though. Oh, then the ball does go down. But Illinois Westland will take game one in this best of five series. And I don't know about you, Oliver, but listen, I, I mean, if you're NTC, obviously it's a big task to come in here against this undefeated team. But my goodness, what a match it was. And you have the opportunity. You've proven you can score goals. None of those goals were open netted goals. You passed across the middle and put it in the net. So you know that you can score against this team. What does that tell you? What does that, if you're, if you're NTC, what are you thinking going into game two here? You're trying to capitalize on what you said were the positive plays there. If you look at the, if you look at their just total for stats right now, it's really nothing that uh, shows out that much. Lightning going ones across the board, one goal, one assist, one save, one shot. Sergeant Dilmack, a similar, uh, similar sort of score sheet, except for he has two saves. Meanwhile, on the other team, you've got three shots, four shots, two shots. Everybody on the team throwing in a bunch of shots at net. So the big thing is that there are two different strategies really being played out here. Illinois Wesleyan taking shot after shot after shot, trying to figure out what's going to land. And NTC on the other side, who are making these really strategic plays and going and hitting 100% from their uh, from the shooting line. So the big thing for them right now for NTC is work on what was uh, what you were able to capitalize on. Make these intricate plays because it's very clear you've got the time Illinois is giving you and you've got the power to be able to do that. You guys have very good prowess and very good skills. So just capitalize on those eccentric plays as they're really going to be what's working best for you right now against this IWU defense. Absolutely. And 
I think for NTC, like you said, playing as a team is going to be something they're going to have to do. There is just so much pressure from Illinois West. They are rotating, they're playing fast, they're playing aggressive, and they are always on the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, game two, Illinois Westland up 1-0 in this best of five. We have a stalled kickoff as Cade tries to put one on goal, but there's a save. Close. The musty flick would have been new. I don't think we've seen a clean musty flick quite yet this season. I'd love to see one. Not quite getting pulled off there, but regardless of that, it seems like we're going to have yet another offense started here out of the IWU boys as they're already all over this one. Uh oh, but a miss out of CAD could leave the middle open. Zerks pops this to the backboard, lightning back out. And again, it just looks like an all out possession here. Oh my word, at IWU! The shot was nice, but oh. Frauhan's save was even nicer. What a save, and what another ball right there to get it out of your own corner. Oh, this is tough. Oh, a huge play by Lightning. Opportunity here for Sergeant Dilmack. Plays it to the corner, sends it back to the center. Frohan, oh no. Mag interrupting there. It's a good play out of him. You said this earlier. The IWU guys, they're extremely aggressive here as another musty flick attempt comes out out of CAD. So they might have heard me call for the musty flick, and I appreciate it, you guys. If you can pull one off, I'd love to see it. But right now, that might not be the best idea. You're a minute into this game and have yet... Oh, wait, maybe not. I was going to say yet to get a goal. Cad going to make me eat my words with a great aerial from the left side. Absolutely. And you know what? One of the things that I'd like to point out, I do feel like, I don't know about you, but NTC, I feel like played a little better defense there to get this game started. Yeah, they're playing a little bit cleaner here. The biggest issue for me, though, is, is that we've said this many times on cast before. If a, def a defense is only as solid as it's clear, so if you make save after save after save but can't transition with it, can't turn it into anything where your team has possession, really doesn't mean much as you Ooh. leave the goal open and you can take shots on the outside like Zerx is going to do right here. And if you look here, it looks like a double commit right there. Maybe not necessarily a double commit. It looked like he might have been trying to turn around and get back to goal, but just not enough time as Zerk plays it into the net for a massive 2-0 lead. Yeah, it's uh, at the moment right now, it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a cluster in the sides right here for everybody off of NTC. They can't quite figure out their rotations right now, and it's coming back to bite them pretty bad. Mag is able to save that one, but NTC, again, they're still not getting off these clean shots we saw the first game. NTC shooting 100% last game. This game now it looks like they're a little bit more desperate to trying to get anything to link. Absolutely. You can tell that they're scrambling, trying to get things done, but the consistent pressure as the ball's played to the middle. And you have to credit this IWU team. They are playing back and still playing defense really well. They're playing really well. And the biggest thing about this, I think, right now is, is that they're using their possession time wisely. You see how much time Cat is given in the air there. Zerx tries to get the follow-up, but Dilmack will interrupt. But regardless of that, they're trying to take the time that they have. The difference between this game and the last is that NTC are kind of just ripping off shots when they got the opportunity and not waiting for a better one to arise. A lot of that has to do with the aggression and pressure that we're seeing at IWU. But regardless, they're starting to scramble, and it's really coming back to bite them oh. as Max scores a third goal here at about half. Time. Uh, break this goal down right here because this is beautiful. Oh, this is a great pass out to the side out of Mag. It's pretty much what we saw as a re uh, from NTC the last game. Mag drops that out to Cad. Cad drops that back out to the middle. And with all the momentum Mag has to take another shot at the goal, I mean, there's nothing you can really do to stop it. He's got the left, right, and center to shoot at there. And you kind of just have to take a guess as the goalie there. And I mean, it's just a pretty play all around. NTC, unfortunately, they're wishing that that was their play because the first game it was. Absolutely. I mean, it is just beyond impressive what what this IWU team is doing right now because they are playing again I, we, I've said it I know I've said it again here's an opportunity but a misplay and, and it looks all over like IWU they just take advantage of every mistake that the opposing team gives them yeah, they're doing a good job of not only taking those mistakes and, like you said, capitalizing on them, but it's also about how they sort of just taunt their opponents at those mistakes. They accentuate them into what are gigantic goals and into really bad instances, and it only hurts the morale even further for NTC. So we talk about it a lot, and uh, what on earth? Hold up, we'll talk about it after we watch this goal back. Cad with, I think, the triple tap? It looked like a triple. I wasn't sure if it was a triple double here. One, two... Call it, I, I, let's give him I a... I think it's three. I'll call it three off it the three. first let's touch. Give it That's three. ridiculous. What an incredible shot out of CAD. Massive solo goal. And this, just like the previous game, is a four goal advantage so far. 
Now, here's the thing. We had about the same sort of time frame last game when we got the first goal out of NTC, but similar to this game, I think that the lead is just too much. IWU coming into this one aggressive, and they're even playing better than last game, I would say. Uh, I agree. I think that they are. Oh, my goodness. What a massive touch. CAD is unbelievable. This kid is getting up. Look at this play. Perfect pass oh off the side corner backboard right to CAD the middle. He's there. No chance that you're stopping that goal. Wow. Oh, my word. The aerial prowess there, the ability to shoot that low and be able to keep that in. I mean, that's just an impressive goal all around. Like you said, Cat has been the center of this offense the whole game. Already at over 600 points, three goals, two assists, and seven shots. Guy has just been all over the, uh, the opponent's goal here so far. And with a minute left, we could see him score even another. Massive. Let's see it played in. Pat, I, you know Mag was trying to go for that cheeky <laughs> goal right there. And, and you know that that Mag was trying to hit it off the corner and put it in. He misses with the touch from Sergeant Dilmag, but Cad is there, slides it under a defender and puts it in six to nothing in game two. As I was mentioning it, I thought that Cad had another in him and that he did over 700 points now, four goals and eight shots. Just unbelievable offense so far out of Cad. And it really also shows how smart of a player they're playing as right now when they drop it low like that out of the fake. Like we said, there's just a lot of desperation right now at NTC to just touch the ball and get any sort of possession play there. So knowing that, Cat just drops it low and takes it slow. And man, this is going to be something I think he's going to play with for the next couple matches as he tries to rip one to center. This patience is going to be his friend throughout the series. Absolutely. And it was a beautiful, beautiful play. Cat with the huge save right there. I mean, look, I have to give my absolute props to this IWU team because right now they are flying around this field. Yeah, they're they're absolutely in control of this game right now. It seems like every time that NTC get out of their own half, they struggle to try and possess the ball and turn that into anything productive. And as this one goes to the air and I would assume hits the ground here on the side, that it does. IWU going to finish this game at 6 to 0. Dominance in its purest form. Absolute, like you said, pure dominance. I'm looking at the leaderboard here, and as I look at it, look at this right here. Nine shots on goal for Cad with four goals going in. Nine shots, three shots, two shots. And if you look at the NTC side, I mean, Lightning, two shots on goal. Sergeant Dilmack, one shot on goal. When you have one player on the other team, more than double shots on goal than the entire other side of the team, I mean, it's hard to try to get a victory against a team like that. I mean, the biggest thing is, is that we saw what the two types of strategies were going to be the first game versus the second game, where we saw IWU just constantly taking shots at net because a lot of them were dropping. They were capitalizing on mistakes. And then the second game, they kind of just took the strategy NTC had and just mashed it with theirs. They kind of just combined the two of them. They kept taking shots on goal when they had the opportunity, but we saw the high flying goals. We saw the passing plays. I mean, they just literally had control every time they got into possession on offense. It really didn't seem like NTC's defense had much of an answer, unfortunately. And I don't know about you, but as I look into this next round, uh, as we go into game three, excuse me, you know, I, I'm expecting nothing less. Do you think that IWU comes out and goes ahead and make this a clean sweep? I mean, in my opinion, personally, I would say yes. I think that this is an IWU sweep for sure, but we're going to have to see as we get down to kickoff because NTC, they've shown they've got the ability. The first game, they had a couple really nice goals. The question is, can they get out to a lead here in this game? Because thus far, they haven't been able to get a lead a single time. And now let's see. The ball is in, in the IWN. Oh, there was an opportunity for Sergeant Dilmack not able to capitalize. Really, there needed to be some other player on their team. We talked about how much they've been aggressive so far and how they've been desperate for a touch, but instead they wait too long and turn it into a double commit, both Lightning and Frauhan going for that one. And that's just not what you need to see out of everybody off of NTC. They had a great opportunity there to start this game off strong, and then just became hesitant and their rotations broke down immediately. Absolutely, and a lot, a lot of action like we've seen before, but here's gonna be an opportunity. It's played to Cat in the air. Uh, from across the map, Illinois Wesleyan University. Uh, look at this. He plays it from his own goal box all the way to CAD. That is teamwork. That is a play. And that is what we look for in the NECC.
that was a great, great play. I mean, just super heads up at everybody. And not to take away from the, uh, not to take away from the goal, but I was sitting in my chair, putting my hands up, going, "Is anyone gonna cover this?" I was sitting, seeing as Mag had that play out. He had an open net, and even without the touch off from uh, from Cad to drop that in. There was still no defender in goal for NTC. I mentioned their rotations are breaking down, and they're really starting to break down as they get desperate for any sort of goal. Again, no one on the back half here. Now this is the offense we've seen far too many times at IWU here. This is what they do. They get you uncomfortable and then just take shots on net until one goes in. Guess not. Max says, I want that one for myself and blocks his teammate. And now it's still going to stay 1-0, but... That's a pretty good example of what I mean, despite the, uh, I, I guess, the own save? I'm not sure how to call that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have a donut going on in the <laughs> in the goal, but here comes Mag, says, okay, the Lightning able to redirect that to the other half. Big save by Cad. As this one just dribbles in the middle, this is just sort of a perfect example of what we mean. You see how hesitant everybody off of uh, NTC was to jump there. And you can see why the minute they do, everybody off IWU begin to set up a play on their offense. So this is just the same sort of thing for NTC right now. They are too scared to try and make a well-developed play. And as a result, they are suffering without possession, without a solid offense, and without any time really to do what they want. Absolutely. I mean, it is just too much aggression. But right now, the ball played into the NTC in. Let's see. Here's going to be an opportunity. Oh, you know he wanted the one-man, one the one -man, one -on one-on-one goal. Mags kicks it off to the side again. And so much pressure like we've seen in all the other games right now from mm. this squad as Mags sends it back. Whoa. Dad almost with a redirect. We've seen this a lot. That's something I'm excited to see. Oh, my word, in playoffs is the passing plays that this team can accomplish. IWU pulling out another one here from Zerst to Mag. This is a pretty pass, and this is an even nicer shot. Jeez. I tell you what, as one of the undefeated teams in this division, getting ready to be one of the top seeds in the playoffs, you have to think, Oliver, right now with what I'm seeing, that the road to the NACC National Championships in Rocket League probably goes through Illinois Wesleyan. I mean, there, there's no chance that, in my opinion, they're going to somehow get upset, at least in the first round. They've got a lot of good competition coming up against them, but, man, we've just seen they hold down so well here. The pressure just doesn't seem to get to them. They look strong here in this third game, but they look just as strong in the first game, starting off with a four-goal lead without any shot going against them. I mean, the question really is, is what team is going to figure out how to crack this egg? They have yet to be damaged. Oh, well gonna say once as they've been undefeated lightning found a little bit of a solution here this is the aggression we had been missing from them absolutely could we possibly see i mean with that goal i mean they still have an opportunity they still have an opportunity to tie this up oliver do you think they're able to come back here and, and maybe at least try to push this to a game four but Ooh, that one got me nervous as Mag is going to try and continue the offense here. If they can survive this onslaught at IWU right now, I think they've got a shot. If they let in another goal, though, ugh, probably not. The biggest difference for the last couple games, we mentioned how they were kind of down and out early. Well, that was because they had scored so many goals against them. IWU has just absolutely been lighting up NTC tonight. Here, though, in this last game, they're playing well, but they're not playing as offensive. Only two goals on the board, and with a one-goal lead here, this could be dangerous. Dropping down, Zerx has got to be careful that he will be. Lightning can't get the shot on net, but this is the best opportunity NTC have had this entire game. Absolutely. They're playing in their own end. Going to send it to the middle. Opportunity, and oh, there's so many touches, but it's not the right one. Stellar defense by <laughs> IWU, and they're, st they're stuck. It's a rule one. We're actually, oh. I think this is the second one I've seen so far this season. And we're going to get a rule one at probably the least opportune time. Oh, it looks like someone broke it. I would assume one of the coaches probably said, yeah, not happening today, boys. <laughs> Unfortunate. We don't get to see it play out. But this is going to make sense for NTC as they need a goal here and they need it quick. Oh, massive, massive rule one in an unopportune time. And right now, with a couple seconds left, it looks like here's going to be another opportunity for Illinois Westland. But, I mean, played in. Maybe there's an opportunity here. But right now, this is not looking good. 
No, a big thing for IWU right now, and you can't... It, it's very subtle right now. They are just wasting time. They're not even trying to just take a ton of shots on net. They are just trying to bring this ball back and forth and see how much time they can waste here. Their goal is not give an opportunity to NTC, and that they will not. IWU going to complete the sweep here. Three dominant games, and well played out of them for sure. Wow, and absolutely... I mean, an unbelievable matchup. And my hat goes off to IWU as they get ready for that NECC playoff push. I mean, tell me right now that you wouldn't want to see an IWU Durham College final because that would be fantastic. <laughs> I'll be honest, as it stands right now, the the truth is, is that it's going to be hard to see any of that go any other way. The only other team I see right now that have just been nearly as dominant would be Kansas Wesleyan University, who have done a similar sort of performance, five wins on their season. I mean, the truth is, is that there's no guaranteed winner here in this uh, in this playoffs. Right now, the NEC has got a spicy playoff racket, and it could go either way. Absolutely. It is going to be some fun action. Ladies and gentlemen, Illinois Wesleyan takes a 3-0 victory over the North Central Technical College. Man, it was a wonderful matchup. And again, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere because we have a triple threader triple threat match for you tonight and we have a fantastic matchup right behind it is going to be awesome as we have hood college facing off against central methodist university what are you looking for uh in this next game oliver out of our game too well the biggest thing again we say this pretty much every single time it's a strong start to these uh, uh it's a strong start to these games that's the biggest thing is that if you don't come out in these games with a lot of uh, confidence in yourself and you don't you know play to your highest performance it's going to be difficult and for both of these teams this is a huge game for them cmu is currently four and three if they are able to take a win here they bump they bump up to the five t uh to one of four teams excuse me that have five wins Kansas, uh, Durham, and I guess now not technically Illinois as they've just secured their, their sixth win. But regardless, there's a lot of teams up there with that amount of wins. Meanwhile, on the other side, Hood, that's one of those teams we were talking about that only have one win right now. So NTC, after taking that loss, they've opened the door to a lot of other teams to try and swoop that seed from them as they're only a win away. So Hood, this would be a huge win for them in this game. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we are about 20 minutes away from that match. So do not go anywhere. Stay right here live. You might be watching on ESTV or you might be watching live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash NECC underscore esports. Stay tuned for another matchup right around the corner. We are about 20 minutes away again. And stay tuned for all the updates, everything live for the postseason right around the corner. And again, follow us on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in 20 minutes. For the entire staff, everyone here at the NECC, my name is Jaron Bell. That's Oliver Bass. We will see you for Game 2 shortly between Hood College and Central Methodist University. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Stay beautiful. Stay blessed. GG's and welcome to the NECC. We'll be right back.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, back like we never left, and welcome to the NECC. It is going to be a fantastic matchup here in game two of our triple header set tonight as we have Hood College facing off against Central Methodist University, and I am joined by the main man. Sometimes it's all about that bass, but tonight it is all about that bass as Oliver Bass from the past himself is in the building. Oliver, it's good to see you, buddy. It's good to see you as well, Jaron. It uh, feels like it's been forever, although it's only been uh, about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, I know, so, right? I'm happy to be back. We got another big matchup for you guys all here today. If you didn't hear before, this is a uh, not make or break game, but this is going to be integral to all these teams for their season. CMU coming into this one at four and three. They are just above the rest of their team, uh, the rest of the teams underneath them, but they'd love to be in the in companionship with every other team that's at five wins right now, Kansas Wesleyan and Durham right next to them, one win away. And meanwhile, on the other end, Hood College also tied with two other teams for one win apiece. So if Hood can win this one, they catch up to NTC and bring themselves the two and five, similar to uh, North North Central's two wins as well. So a lot on the line here in this game, Jaron. I uh, I'm excited to see how both of these teams start out. It is going to be a fantastic matchup. Like you said, both of these teams so crucial and so ready for tonight's game as this is the final matchup for the regular season here at the NECC. The playoffs just right around the corner as we get ready. We want to remind you before we go anywhere that you can follow us as we get ready for the playoff push online on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games on Twitter and Instagram for live updates, playoff bracketing, and giveaways. You're going to want to check us out on social media to see what we have coming right around the corner. And I tell you what, Oliver, what are you expecting as we get into this match? We've seen both these teams this year, and I think it's going to be a fantastic matchup back and forth. Oh, I would agree on that one. I would say the biggest thing about uh, um, both of these teams, I mean, the team really here to watch is CMU. Hood has been a great squad throughout this entire season, but CMU are one of those underdogs as we go into the uh, into the playoffs. They're currently sitting around the fourth seed, most likely at minimum. That's what they're getting. But they're definitely a team that hasn't been talked about as much as Durham, Illinois, or Kansas. All three of those teams have come into this one a little bit, a little bit ahead of them, but I think CMU is going to be one of those sleeper squads as we go into the playoffs. So I'd like to see them prove to everybody here today why they are a contender and why they are really a threat going into playoffs. That is absolutely right. We are getting the teams ready. We are getting them in the chat. We are letting them know that it is game time for game two here at the NECC. We have everyone in. Here we go. Game two, live kickoff. We have Rocket League action here at the NECC. And straight to it, CMU are hoping to come out here with a little bit of punch, but similarly on the other end, we're looking for the same sort of punch out of Hood College. Hood would love to start off with a lead here because if they do, they give themselves a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of relief, although that doesn't look like it's going to give them any relief. Although Gond can't get it on target. Gond with basically an open net, but puts it against the bar, and now Roadrunner can't follow him up. CMU should be up 1-0 to zero right now. What a massive, massive hold, but Hood College still not out of trouble. Still, st the ball is still in their end. Like we've said, they have to turn this. They have to try to make a move. That they are trying to, trying to slow down this ball a little bit and start in the possession play of some sort, but still yet to have a clean shot on net. And as Cavs makes a play out to the side, I think that's the end of their offense. Here comes CMU, CMU ready to try and score here. Not quite, though. This one, a little bit of a back and forth right now, ping pong style. Oh, but that's going to end it right there. Gone going to make up for his miss earlier on a little bit of hesitation out of Hood College. Man, and what? let's look at this goal. All caps, just not enough boost maybe to get back and just late from the other defending side and a massive goal for CMU. They almost are able to stop that one, but Hood College, I believe specifically, like you said, all caps, just a little bit hesitant on that one. Maybe didn't think had the boost had to have a clean touch there, but unfortunately, without any touch coming through, Gone Season is immediately going to score the first goal of this game, and now this is the worst position for Hood to be in. They wanted to bring some momentum, give themselves a little bit of shot against the obvious, uh, what I would say is uh, projected winners here today, but... 
right now they're not looking like they're in the best position as they're still floundering to get out of their own half. Well, and we've always seen, we've seen a lot of teams start very slow here in the NECC in these first games of these best of five series. But here's a shot on goal, Ooh. and that's not going to help as Roadrunner says beep beep and puts it in the back net. My goodness, what a goal from across the map. Good patience out of Roadrunner there, too. Again, you see all caps diving in on that one. Doesn't quite get the touch he's looking for for a second time. And as a result, Roadrunner are going to take full advantage and bang that one through here. With about three minutes left now, Hood College, they've got to try and get an answer here quickly. They're giving way too much time for CMU to bring out a lead. That could be too much for them to surmount. That, that was a great flick right there by Phantom in the beginning, but still just not able to capitalize as CMU stays back on defense. Clemens drops this one down, and that could be dangerous. You heard the demo on the back half. Roadrunner going to get the demo out here, and now CMU, they've got plenty of time and plenty of boost. Oh, but a little bit of an overcommitment there. Nader Tot somehow able to get out of his own half, and could this be the start for Hood? Oh! That it will be. Clemens going to be in the center, and there we go. Hood College on the board. And let's not undersell this is a beautiful pass to the middle for slamming but do not underestimate the play that nader tot had in the goal double faking and then getting away from his team that was a massive goal and that goal should be in nader tot's side because he earned that and set it up for his team this is a good start for hood college well, i shouldn't say start this is a good change for hood college here as they've started to pick up the pace and they're giving themselves some more time on the ball question is, is, do they have enough time left in this game? We're getting down to just about the halfway point, and there's still a goal down. That's a nice pass out of all caps, though. No one's going to be there, though. Phantom will get the save, and now this goes back to the other end. CMU, we've seen this transition the, uh, offense work so many times before. question is, if they get this one, are they going to have enough, or our hood, excuse me, going to have enough time to come back from what would be a two-goal deficit? Well, and there's, it looks like there might be an advantage here, but no. Grants with a beautiful self-place off the wall, but a big save by slamming to not let Roadrunner have another goal. Again, these teams look hesitant when it comes to midfield. The real presence is coming at both of the final thirds, whether it's the third in front of Hood College's goal or the third in front of everyone off of CMU's goal. But right now, it's just looking a little bit like neither of these teams want to be the one to make the risky play. Obviously, it's because they don't want to let in another one. A goal goes up here for CMU. That is too big of a deficit for Hood College to come back from. And if Hood College makes a goal here, well, you're tied and we could go to overtime. So both teams trying to play a little bit more hesitantly in reserve. Absolutely, and, and uh, it blows my mind that we're uh, this is a one-goal game Ooh. and another massive save as Grant almost put one in there. Yeah, this is surprising that we're at a one-goal game here, especially with how dominant CMU was to start off, and uh, all of a sudden, though, Hood, they've just, it's like they flicked on a switch. All of a sudden, they've been able to hold on to every single offense. Oh, well, maybe, oh. Well, I was going to say not every offense, but apparently so. That one going high. CMU, they should be up two right now. Oh, well, they're, they're up two anyways. Well, but you have to give it to Hood College right there because that is impressive. Impressive, impressive, an impressive play that, I mean, I'm impressed with Hood. I, I know it sounds silly because they're down 2-1 and kudos go to CMU, but right now, Hood College, I mean, they really were playing some fantastic defense there for about two minutes. They were playing really well. The issue is, is that we've seen this so many times before. Now, now comes the breakdown as Phantom gets a little bit of a dribbler in front of the opponent's goal. But the, the big thing is, is that, again, we mentioned how a good defense needs to transition into a good offense. Otherwise, you're kind of just making a good defense so that you can slowly run out of boost here. And as a result, CMU, they've now started to run away with this game as the pressure is just becoming too much for Hood College. And again, I think if you're Hood, though, you have to know that this is a five-game series. So, I mean, you, you still have some options. This this game is by, this match is by far not over with, but you need to be able to try to put some things together, like you said, Oliver. Yeah, the big thing is just surviving that pressure and then turning it into a big play. I, I think that's really the only thing that they can focus on going into this next game, because like you said, their defense has been impressive thus far. It's more about maintaining that defense and then man maintaining that possession and turning it into something big, because as the clock ticks down here with the last couple seconds on 
uh, on this game. It's really not going to change the scoreline here, even if we can get a goal out of Hood, which we will. All Caps going to take advantage of the dribbler in front of the goal and bring his team to two goals, but eight seconds left. They just don't have the time to try and make a comeback here. No, you're right. There's just too much. I mean, impressive goal there, but what that goal does, Oliver, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that sets you up right there for game two. That it does. I mean, it gives you a lot of uh, it gives you a lot of momentum. Although to be fair, this is literally the exact same sort of well, not the exact same, a little bit different. It's a similar scoreline to what we saw in the last series we watched. Four two was the end of the first game. CMU coming out on top here. It was the victor or it was the uh, projected winners coming out on top. The difference is here. I think there's a little bit more momentum for Hood. I think they've got a much better shot at bringing this one back here. As NTC couldn't quite get the job done last time, but. Uh, here, Hood looks like they've got a little bit of momentum. I completely agree with you. They they scored those early goals, and you have to give it to Hood because they... Oliver, I know I, I'm not trying to take away from what CMU is doing. They are playing aggressive. They are rotating together. They're not making too many mistakes over committing. But in the situations where they are making mistakes, Hood College is not really capitalizing. But for a solid stretch there, this was an even game, Oliver. And I thought it could have went either way at, at two to one earlier in this game. Yeah, they're really at the two to one spot that looked like there was really a shot of this game going either side. The real thing that happened there was that immediately as soon as CMU saw that there was a little bit of light for Hood, that they had a chance of bringing it, they just went all out relentless pressure. And it shows up on the scoreline here. Five total shots for everyone off of Hood. Meanwhile, 17 off of CMU. That is three times the shots. I mean, it's similar to what we saw last series where one team takes precise shots and they get them in most of the time. Meanwhile, on the other end, we've got CMU who just rip shots against the backboard over and over again until one drops and the question yeah, is yep. again which one of these strategies is going to be the winning one in this game or in today's series and is there going to be a change is there going to be a change of series where they tr maybe try to do a substitute or maybe just try to change up some play styles oliver if you're hood what kind of changes are you making as we get ready for kickoff if you're Hood, your biggest thing is working with the possessions that you have, not giving up too easily. We saw that cost them the goal there in the last game as all caps just waited on a ball far too long. You need to take that possession and run with it. Keep the pressure. Keep the play alive. Don't give your opponents any time. Otherwise, they're just going to continue to stuff you. And as we get into this game here, this is a much better start for Hood. They're already on their opponent's half. And the pressure is building here as Nader goes to the sky. Could we see an immediate goal out of Hood College? Not quite. Arizona going to fight it off for now. Absolutely. All caps there. But it looks like Phantom and the CMU offense is going to head that way. Oh, double missed touch right there uh, on the end. Nader taught looking. Oh, opportunity. Oh, but right there, Arizona is there. And you could see he tried to get CMU to bite there with a little bit of a fake out. Nader Todd wanted the first uh, defender back to jump for the first one. And after he couldn't get the fake out to work, that was the end of the offense. That's the big thing for CMU here. If they can keep a level ahead, I think they do have the uh, they still do have the advantage in this series. But the question is, is whether or not they get that momentum from Hood in their head. Obviously, like you said, Hood had the greater momentum coming out of the first game. So if they can stay level headed here, I think CMU still still have a good shot at this game. And all caps able to pick up that boost on the end. Here's an opportunity backboard, but no one his teammate not there. And the ball goes maybe an opportunity here for Hood Oliver. Hood looking like they could try and start up a possession here. The the big thing for Hood there, though, yep, is di just dipping off the ball when they don't need to. I was waiting for that to happen. You saw the touch out of Nader Tot, and then no one's there to follow it up. Slamon's just going to wait in goal. He can't really go out of it, but when he gets bumped out, it's not going to make a difference anyways. Roadrunner, good heads-up play there. We mentioned this before. Good teams take advantage of the mistakes and capitalize like no other. So was that there? Was that a bad touch by all caps, or was that just his teammate not following that up? You think? The thing is, is I think it's oh my word, a little bit of both. We're gonna see another demo play come out. So before we get into talking about the play before here, let's talk about this one. Uh, Phantom with a great speed to get to this one, and a perfect demo on the line to finish it. Good play all around there from CMU, but like you said, I think it's a little bit of a mistake play out, out of Hood. That first touch out of Nader taught back to the middle where Slammon was waiting in goal. As much as Slammon can jump on that one, at the same time, your goal is to slow down the play there. Not try and give the other team any room. Don't try and give them an opportunity. So right now, Jaron, I think it's the same thing we've seen before. Hood are making small mistakes and CMU are capitalizing. 
A hundred percent. And again, the difference is, by far, is CMU not playing a perfect game, but Hood just not able to return on those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the big question really is for Hood, as we've seen uh, previous today, if they can't get out of this deficit here, which, oh, I don't think they'll be able to as a third goal comes in for Gon's season. Man, we've talked about these passing plays all day. Look how pretty this pass is from Roadrunner. I mean, it, it's just off the corner, right to the center of the net. It's like he gift wrapped it and Christmas came early, put it right in front of the net, and he puts it in for the 3-0 lead. Oliver, this is impressive what we're seeing out of CMU in this second game. Yeah, they're playing really well, and like we said, we expected Hood to come out here with a little bit more firepower, keep this one close. Excuse me, keep this one close, but unfortunately, CMU have just kind of ran away with this one. They've continued to play just as aggressively as the first game, and Hood, again, not having time to set up plays. There's just someone breathing down their neck at every single moment right now, and CMU, they're just loving it. They're able to get as much time as they need. They're making passing plays. They're making some intricate demo plays, two of them in a row coming out on the line. I mean... CMU right now, they're kind of just proving, like I said at the beginning of the series, why they're the sleeper team in the playoffs, why they are not to be forgotten, and why they're going to be here to oh. win it all. Phantom, 4-0 to zero it becomes. And there might have been an opportunity right there in goal, but just a touch by Phantom. Oh, and he puts it in the right side of the net. The defense cannot make the save. Massive, massive goal right there for CMU. So I'll extend the question to you now, Jaron. I've obviously taken my crack at what I think that Hood needs to do to readjust here, but looking from the outside in, what do you think is what uh, the keys to victory here for Hood? Because obviously right now this is an even worse performance in the first game, I would say, as they're, they've got no answers on how to crack the defense here. They're getting demoed way more. They're not able to hold off this defense. It just doesn't look as strong as Arizona Roadrunner brings in yet another one. So like I said, Jaron, what are the keys to victory here for Hood as they go into this third game? I mean, listen, I, I, I hate to say this, Oliver, but I think it comes down to maybe trying to do the simple things better. And I know that's sad, and, and or mm -hmm. not sad, but, you know, I think just fixing your rotating, taking away some of the double commitments, and a lot of times we have seen players like Nader Tot or, or All, Allstate try to make a play, uh, excuse me, all caps, you know, Nader Tot and all caps – Either one of those guys make a play, but there's no one there to support their team. One of the things mm. CMU is doing is they continuously have someone there as we almost had an opportunity right there by Phantom. But that's one of the things for Hood. I think they need to do the basic things better. Yeah, I think you're 100% on that. Like you said, I mean, the rotations are... It, the big thing for rotations is not if one player is in correct position for rotations. If a rotation is going to work, you need every single player on your team in sync working as a unit. And if you don't have someone behind you who's willing to run them play the same way you are, that's where the trouble starts to come here. It's a great save out of Nader Tot, but regardless of that, that's probably... I mean... This may be the best opportunity Hood has been given all game, and it's only coming off of an overly aggressive offense out of CMU. So that's not what you need to see. They need to be but, able to break the defense down without an error. Well, and not to try to cut you off there, but that is exactly what we saw. We saw we, we just saw an open net possibility, CMU trying to get back. He does play it off to the center, drops it down, but all caps waits and doesn't attack on the ball. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think that, I mean, that that's the issue is, is that this has become so common for everyone off of a hood. Okay, they'll get one in here. All Cap's going to play that one patiently. But again, it just feels like if there was someone in goal there, that one's not going in. There's not enough offensive pressure out of hood to make that a threatening shot there. I feel like despite that going in, there really isn't much momentum shift there. No, I mean, and again, that's just a solo big play right there by All Cap's because... No one else was there to help him. He just made a solo play, and we both know in competitive Rocket League, you can't do 3v3s like it's a 1v1. And that right there, CMU, as we look at this replay, the all cap sends it to the center, and Phantom is just right there to play it to the center. Demo as it comes in. Massive, massive goal. One goal away from maybe taking us to Rio and Brazil. It's uh, it, it's really unfortunate that you see these demo plays come out because there's two factors to a demo play. One, obviously, the demo itself, where you're going to be taking a player out of the situation and they can no longer, you know, try and help their team no matter what's going on. And then there's the second half of a demo play. Ooh, almost the Brazil Roadrunner can't get that on target. Oh. 
CMU going to win this one. But as I was saying, it's the mental fatigue that comes from getting taken out of the game over and over again, feeling like you can't do anything here. And right now, CMU, they literally, they, they, they can't. There's no way that they're able to bring this one uh, through here when they continue to get taken out of the play over, or excuse me, Hood get taken out of the play over and over again. And the frustration becomes to build, uh, begins to build here. So CMU, they're looking comfortable as they go into this third game. Unfortunately for Hood, I think for frustrations are only starting to build. Well, and you know what, Oliver, as I look at the stat sheet right here from that game, I mean, let's talk about for C the CMU side. I mean, this the stats are pretty indicative of the way this game played out because Phantom, six shots on goal. Roadrunner, three shots on goal. Even Gand got in and had uh, one shot on goal. And the only shots on goal were the three shots from all caps. So no one following up there. I mean, as we look at the leaderboard, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, ten, it's crazy. Ten, ten shots on goal to three is is not an easy way to turn around in any matchup. No, and the crazy other thing about it is is that the save differential isn't that crazy either. CMU, I believe, walking away with two saves and Hood having three. So it's clear that the difference here is the offense. Hood has maintained a solid defense most of this game. We mentioned it the first series or the first game of the series as well. They've had a good offense, but or a good defense, but their offense has been lacking. CMU, when they come in here with an offense, they come in here with firepower. And as we get into this third game, the question is, does Hood have that firepower someone uh, somewhere behind them? And have they just been hiding it from us thus far? Absolutely. Excuse me right there. But here's, let's see. I mean, here comes CMU. They're coming right now. As an opportunity comes in, ball plays in. <laughs> Looks like a self-save right there. I don't know what that was. But a big demo in the corner. Low play Let's out to the corner it. yet again. Hood College now, they, they just don't look urgent right now. Hood, C, uh, CMU have just been all over this ball here. And unfortunately, we're back to the usual Whoa. tricks as Phantom reads that one in the air pretty much perfect. And plays it almost. Let's. I want to see if this touches. It does. I thought his teammate, the, the Hood player, went for his teammate that was up there. And he didn't even get a pass or an assist there. It looks like he just took it off the wall and put it in the net. Unfortunate. This is just, this is the same thing we've seen sort of all day out of Hood College is that they get oh so close here, but they just continue to not have the pressure they need. They get very close on offense as they start up another one here, but now it's on the other end and Phantom's going to put the, or excuse me, Gone Season's going to put this one through. The issue is if they try and play this all out pressure, they leave themselves exposed on the back half. If they don't try and play this all out pressure, they don't get any pressure on their opponents and they score a goal. Right now, this looks like a lose-lose situation for Hood as they just can't figure out how to break down this CMU offense. Well, you know, CMU came into this match a heavy, heavy favorite. And, and, you know, I can tell you this. I've been on the other end of a lot of times where we've seen favorites come in and not be able to to take a victory. But right now, CMU is playing their part in the story and being very impressive right now from what we've seen. Here's an opportunity. Oh, that's a big save. I was going to say, the good thing for Hood is is that they're going to walk away with a goal here. That they will, despite of what I'll call a couple of missed touches there. That one out to the side, not what you're looking for. The bar, not what you're looking for either, but Slammon's there. But Hood, they're at least going to be able to bring down the pressure here. They've had a lot of uncontested goals where the lead just grows here. CMU getting stopped for just the second. Hood needs to run with this. Absolutely. But here comes CMU. Oh, my goodness. Off the post. Almost put it in the bottom corner of the net there, Oliver. And that's a great demo. Oh. Perfect stuff out of slamming. And could, Oliver, could we be going, as we look at this replay, a massive, massive demo to leave Nader top with a wide open goal. He's able to clutch it. <laughs> uh, are we going to see a game four here? I don't know. We might be able to. The big thing for what's going on right now is that this is very different than what we had seen. Oh, my word. From what previous oh. in the day, we had not seen the physicality come up to par here. We saw a lot of demos last game. I believe half of the goals that went through from everyone off the CMU was a demo goal. And now we've seen a demo goal to even out the series here for Hood College. So if they can start getting physical, if they can keep themselves in this one with high aggression, high octane gameplay, I think they've got a shot. Hood College now looking way different than they had in the last two games. And again, almost got caught 
Almost got caught a kid with no one back. So it, it, let's see right now if Hood is going to be able to respond. That's a great clear out of Slammin. Is anyone there to follow up? Oh. No one needs to. Oh. Slammin's got an open net to shoot upon. Where's the defense for CMU? Look at this. From his own goal box, Oliver, he sends it and said it's not time to go home yet. It's a 3-2 hood advantage. Wow, how the tables have turned, Bass. This is ridiculous. I mean, Jaron, I, I honestly, going into this game, you and I were both talking about it. We didn't know what Hood was going to be able to do here. They had tried their best in the first game to do something to just, you know, silence the noise. They couldn't do it. They couldn't get it done the second game here. Now, in the third game, all of a sudden, they're electric, taking demos where they need to, taking shots where they need to. Their pressure is just up to 10 fold here. And now the question is, does CMU have a way to try and calm themselves down and calm the other team down? Because CMU is well doesn't look like the same team we saw in the first two games. That's right. It's a massive flick right there. Opportunity. Oh, and the oh, demo. Oh, oh. Sent back to the center. Ball played into the right corner. You'd love to see. Oh, just a missed touch. I thought Slammin was going to have an opportunity there, Oliver. Now here's the issue. CMU, they've been deadly from this position. Oh. And they'll be deadly again. Gone season. You saw the pass coming from AZ Roadrunner, and you thought if a player can get a touch here, CMU are going to tie it up. Man, and again, like you said, as, as we watch that replay, we have seen it time and time again, the teamwork and the team plays. Now let's see if Hood can take this win and push us to a game four. We have two minutes left in game three of this best of five. The question is really for Hood is even if they get out of this game, they're still going to have to reverse sweep in order to secure the win here. CMU, they've played this so efficiently so far. They may take a loss here in this game. The question is, is can they bounce back? I mean, Jaron, we've seen, oh my word, them play so well so far. I don't think they're even going to need the fourth game. Oh my goodness. And hey, Oliver, let's both touch on as we see the replay off the crossbar right over Slammin's head, puts it in to take the advantage with a minute and 33 seconds left. I mean, right now, you have got to give credit to this CMU team because they have come back and fought, fought to keep this game alive. CMU, I mean, they obviously, like we said, they've been the, the better team throughout this series. We have thought that they were going to come into this one and absolutely wipe the floor. Hood College have put up a heck of a fight so far. The question is, is can they try and bring this one back? Like you said, CMU showing their resilience here in this game, but we're not quite done yet. We've got a minute left. Hood have the potential here. They'd love to continue this series and avoid the sweep. So let's see what they can do as we get down to the minute mark. Absolutely. One minute left. In this match right now with a one goal advantage, going to be a 3-0 sweep if Hood cannot get a goal back and push this thing to overtime. But it doesn't Ooh. matter because Gann is the man of the match so far in this one. An unbelievable 5-3 lead with 50 seconds left. And man, you said it best. Man of the match is almost an understatement right now. His stat sheet just looking electric. Four goals, one save on five shots. He has managed to just continually put himself in almost every single goal that they've had so far. CMU, they're finishing up this game strong as they try to put in another one. But regardless of that, the two-goal lead, it just might be too much for Hood to surmount here as the clock ticks down to about 30 seconds left. 100% possibly another goal but the demo does come out but still the pressure even after the demo tons of pressure from CMU I mean if there's anything to say about this performance here today one to hood you played a great game you should be proud of how well you played especially in this final game almost able to bring this one away but the other thing to take away from this is CMU they are for real. Get ready for them in playoffs. They are going to be a scary team. They were just dominant in the first two games. And in the final game here, as they secure the win, they come from behind to get said win. And man, did they fight hard. They are a resilient team, a scary team, and someone to watch out as the NECC heads into the playoffs. Absolutely. You are completely right. And Oliver, one of the things that I want to touch base on is let's not talk about game one and game two, because I think it's pretty apparent what happened in those games. They just came out. They were more aggressive. They played more team. They didn't make as many mistakes. They scored multiple, multiple goals and won those games match. But Oliver, what I'm the most impressed with about CMU as they take this victory today is how about falling 
falling down to a team that was an underdog trying to push this to a game four and to be able to rally back. I mean, they were down with what one minute and 33 seconds left and they came back and win this game by two goals. That's what champions are made of Oliver. Oh, that's almost an, I, I, no better way to say that. That is what br- brings a champion she, uh, championship team to victory. It's being able to perform, and not only perform, they did it on stream. A lot of people don't quite understand when they look at a game like this. They say, oh, it's just, you know, it's another Rocket League game. You're playing a best of five. You're just playing some teams and seeing who can do best. It is such a different atmosphere when you show up on stream. Know that you've got tons of people watching you. You've got fans who are cheering for your team. That's what makes or breaks a playoff team is once you get into that atmosphere in playoffs, everything twi- uh, everything switches. The pressure is higher. The stakes are higher. You know that if you take a loss there, that has resonated way more than a loss in season, uh, in season play. So that's going to be an X factor for them as they go into the playoffs. There's a lot of teams out there who have a couple more wins than them, but that doesn't really matter. If they're going to be the team with the, cl- uh, the best clutch, that's going to bring them real far in the playoffs. Absolutely. I could not say that better myself. There are other teams with better records and maybe a higher ranking, but do not sleep on this CMU team as we get ready for the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we have had a fast pace group of action a couple sweeps tonight as you saw illinois westland win 3-0 over north central technical college earlier tonight and now you see cmu defeat hood college as central methodist university takes the 3-0 win but we are not done yet ladies and gentlemen in 20 minutes I mean, Oliver, we have another matchup as Howard Community College, their first team, faces off against Carroll University. You're on the call on that next game, the third match of the night. What are you expecting from game three? Well, again, this is another one of these games where it's really, it's a big win if you were the highest team uh, up here. Uh, Howard Community College is obviously at the moment, they are going to be the... uh, uh, we'll call it the favorites here as they are at six and one. However, they're against a team that's been pretty strong so far this season. Carroll is three and three at the moment, and they are three and three well above the other teams underneath them right now. They're sitting at fifth place in sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. All of them combined have two wins, so they have put themselves far and away above the competition. If they take a win here, they tie themselves against Becker and against CSUDH. So this is a big game coming up for both of these teams. However, they want to cement their record. Meanwhile, Carroll on the other end, they want to try and improve it. So don't go anywhere, guys. The NEC has got plenty of action for you guys coming up in just a little bit here. Absolutely. And all this action that is brought to you tonight and multiple days a week and the playoffs is brought to you by our proud partners. We want to say thank you to Helix Esports for all they do for us behind the scenes. Of course, thank you to our new friends at Meta Pro Gaming. They built our beautiful brand new website. And if you have any esports arena needs, updates, or builds, reach out to our friends at Meta Pro Gaming. Of course, HyperX. I know I've got mine on, and I know that Bass keeps his on. If I'm casting, that's all I'm using. Big shout out to HyperX because now some of the best gear in gaming now comes to the NECC. And of course, you might be watching live on ESTV. ESTV now available on Samsung TV Plus, the Roku channel, Vizio, and plenty of platforms where you can catch esports action from around the globe, including all the NECC playoffs and championships right there on ESTV. Thank you so much to everyone, all the interns, everyone behind the scenes. We are very excited. We will have that handsome devil himself, Voltage Plays, joining Bass for that third game of the night. For everyone here at the NECC, for all the producers and everyone behind the scenes, I thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Until next time, my name is Jaron Bell. Stay beautiful, stay blessed, GG's, and we are the NECC. We'll see you guys in about 20 minutes.
make me go back to L.A. I don't care where you go, Bojack, but I can't have you around here. You could be too sad. Okay.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NECC. We are back again for our third Rocket League match in a row. My name is Bass from the past, Oliver Bass, and joined with me today, we got a little bit of a switch up. Voltage, welcome back, my guy. You excited to be here? Very excited to be here. Last game of the regular season before playoffs start. Important game for both of these teams. Absolutely. We got two incredible squads coming up against you guys in just a moment. In just a moment, excuse me, Howard Community College uh, versus, uh, I believe this is not CMU, Carol. I apologize, Carroll College. Oh, my mistake, trying to remember the names of all the teams, too many on the brain. But Carroll's in an important position here. We were just talking about this before we got on stream here today. Carroll's in an interesting predicament where they are just underneath where they need to be in order to have a really solid seeding in playoffs. And this could be the game for them to do it here today. Yeah, absolutely. Carroll's sitting at three and three, just below CSUDH is four and two. But CSUDH is going up against the number one seed, the undefeated University of Montana. So that's going to be a hard fought battle. If they do lose, then they are tied in the series. And we have to go and look at their uh, matches or games won inside those matches to see the seeding. So they might move up from the five all the way up to, sorry, the, yeah, they might move up to the four seed or sorry, the mm -hmm. three seed. I can't talk. <laughs> No worries, but I think people are starting to understand the, you know, the the absolute importance that is this game here today. And similarly, again, like you said, uh, Montana, they're in a really interesting predicament as well. If they lose today, they leave the door open for uh, HCC to where they can go up to them. Meanwhile, at the same time, for Carroll, if they uh, end up taking the win away here, they bring down Becker and CSUDH, who would be taking losses against Montana, like you said. So really, there are both sides of the coin at play here. There are teams that can drop down drastically, and there are teams who can elevate themselves to a whole nother level so really the question only is which one of these teams do you think has the shot here today honestly i think my money still goes on howard community college they've played really well throughout the season they have a record to prove it and they've been one of those teams we've talked about the whole season yeah absolutely so they've only lost to montana and we're gonna go ahead and get going soon into this but like I said, they've only lost to Montana, sitting at six and one currently versus Carroll's three and three. So it's going to be a hard, hard fought battle that Carroll is probably going to put all their heart into here to try to move up in the bracket and get a better seating for this playoff tournament that we've got coming up for you in two weeks. Absolutely. And speaking of playoffs, we want to give a quick shout out to all of our partners here today. First off, Helix Esports for providing us with everything that they do behind the scenes. A huge shout out to those guys. Really, really appreciate all the help that they've done. Another shout out to our linear TV provider, ESTV, bringing you around the globe action. Make sure to go check them out on the Roku channel, on the Roku channel, Samsung TV, and everywhere else that they stream so you can keep up with all the NECC action and all the esports action that they provide. And finally, HyperX. You guys sent me out a pair of headphones this week, and I could not be more thankful. They are incredibly comfortable, and it really is the best gear in gaming. As you see, Voltage has got them. He's rocking them as well. So big shout out to HyperX. Thank you guys for all the gear that you provide and all the help you do behind the scenes. So without further ado, though, we're just about ready to get in here. We wanted to give a quick shout out to our uh, partners, but really, it, uh, I, I think we're just uh, we're just excited more than anything for this game here, Voltage. Like you said, I mean, it, this is the last game of the season, last game of the regular season on stream. How can you not be excited? I'm very excited. As we see the players joining in, this is the final moments that are strategic. They're talking strategy amongst each other and the kickoff is going here neuropulse is going to lose but dad is going to miss it logs and trees with little boost they're taking up field duff for reels pushing it to the side a good uh, play out of the corner there got around one of them and just to reiterate howard community college is going to be on blue while carol is going to be on the orange team and I what love that we're immediately. I love that we're immediately seeing Nubel. He is in the battle bus. If you guys don't know this, uh, Fortnite when when Rocket League went free to play, Fortnite did a quick little collab with them when they gave you the option to unlock the battle bus as a car. It is, in my opinion, the worst hitbox in the game. But for Nubel, I'd love to see him pull something off with it here today. Yeah, I definitely think he is going to try. He is the more mechanically sound as he misses an easy save from Duck for reals. Oh, no. Uh, I I'm going to blame that one on the battle bus. I think that has to do with the battle bus. Uh <laughs> oh. 
I don't oh. even know if you can blame that on the battle buses. He wasn't on that goal line for the save. Giving him being on the goal line would give him a little more time to save that. And I think he just pushed up. Being the last man back was just slightly like meter a meter too far. So well, here's the good thing. Carol, this is the start that you wanted. You're a minute into this game. You've got one goal. It's obviously a demoralizing goal as it was all because of a mistake off the other team here. So now, Howard, they've got to try to keep themselves in this game. Carol coming out to a very strong start. Nubel misses the ball but goes ahead and gets a demo. Nero with a good 50, leaving it open for his teammates in mid, but they decide to stay back. And all three of them, it looks like, are up. Neuropost decides to go back, and what a smart decision from him. Ooh, Almost a really I nice shot as well. Yeah, I didn't see those last two defenders till the last second from my angle. So I uh, I was very surprised when they were there. Duffer Rills bringing it out of his own end, getting bumped by his teammate Overture, who's going to pick the ball up on the wall. And that's a, uh, that's a good challenge there from Neuro, trying to uh, win some possession there. It's a little bit of a misplay on the back half, though, here. And now Carroll getting in position here. Can they try and continue? The Reels is going to be on the back half. He's got plenty of time to clear this one out. And as Nubel drops this to the side, Carroll need to score here. If they can get another goal on the board, they bought themselves a pretty decent lead here. Uh-oh, but Nubel on the other end. The battle bus extraordinaire coming through, passing it out to the center. And in the center it goes. No one home, though. Neither team making a touch. This is looking extremely awkward so far. Very awkward play there right in front of the Carroll net, but luckily nothing comes of it. HCC isn't able to capitalize as long as the trees flies past the ball there. Not able to do much, and he's he's more of the uh, the anchor for this team, if you will. And let's let's look for uh, a week at the game against Alabama. We saw how our community college win in overtime game five. It feels like a different team. They're playing slower by a lot very disorganized although it seems like both teams are dad you saw there we got a little bit of a vision of him for a second and he was kind of just chasing it really does seem oh no like right now what? neither team is at their peak both teams need to settle it down uh talk you know communicate talk about your rotations uh and really just bring, bring it back together both these teams are better than this we've seen them all season play better than this and hopefully by the later games, three, four, and maybe even five, we're seeing a little bit of everything cleaned up as we see Nubel miss another touch of the ball in the corner. Lines and trees with another missed touch, and it's just a different play as Dad brings it out of his own end, beats Neuro. This right now is just absolute chaos. Neither team really seemed to have the time to set up a play as Newell pops one out to the side. Uh, I, I think the biggest issue right now for both teams is just their rotations are not there. You see the pass out to the center. Nubel then tries to die for his own pass. Meanwhile, Logs and Trees is there. There just isn't the sync we had seen previously. Like you said, this is a team that's taken wins away from people like Alabama. That's a huge name to take away a win from and a strong squad at that. So they've got to try and just recenter themselves, refocus and get back to their peak for uh, what is it? Their peak performance because. We know they're better than this. This is not even a question. Both of these squads have way more to show us. Absolutely. As we continue to see some misplays here on both ends of the field. Logs and trees following up the clear. Devriel, this one plays against the wall. Sure comes in from far post to deny the opportunity. And, and it, it feels a little bit cleaner here. We're, we're starting to clean back up. Logs and trees trying to play from his own end. Not able to do it as uh, Nubel's last back here with the bottom bus pushing it into the corner and challenges Overture. I, I feel like the difference might have switched over. It doesn't feel as, uh, as chaotic anymore as the pace has slowed down significantly, but it still feels very awkward. It does not feel like both teams are getting confident touches on the ball. You see Neuro just pop that one out there. Who's that too? That's basically a pass to the other team. And right now, oh my word, that demo is going to leave the goal open. Logs and Trees is going to put it away with four seconds left. And I think with four seconds left, it's the first of time that they've like felt like a team on HCC. I've seen it a couple times over on the other side of the field, but we are getting into it with four seconds left. 
Uh, Carol really needs to pull something together here as D Duffer real puts it on the wall. The real question is, as this ball hits the ground here, this is a performance out of Howard that, while not abysmal, it was definitely not the top-tier stuff we were used to out of Howard, and it really showed. The only player there really popping himself all over the field was uh, was Logs and Trees, who managed two goals, one save, and seven shots. Meanwhile, one shot for Neuropulse, uh, for Neuropulse and one shot for Nubel. This is a solid Howard Community uh, College squad that we've seen before, but I don't think they can take another win away that easily. This is not a series that they can afford to mess around in. No, Carroll is definitely in the running for an opportunity at the number one win in the playoffs, the championship win. And what we're seeing from our community college isn't going to put them in a possible number one spot in the, in the league. Uh, so really what we're seeing is, is Carroll's coming out Yes, they lost this game, but they definitely looked more composed for the most time in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the, the the truth is is that we're really going to need a different approach out of Carroll in the next game. They didn't play badly here, but they just did not have the sort of, I would say, aggression they need to beat a team like Howard Community College. Howard, when they're on, they don't give you a a lick of breathing room. So the big thing is here for Carroll, they needed that win. That was one of the few games they're going to get a squad that's not in completely perfect form. And if they don't take that win, that's going to be disastrous. So as they get into the second game here, they need to start off strong. If they don't, this is going to be a hard series to come back from. And is that a Dominus I see from Moogle who has decided to move away from the battle bus here? I, I respect the choice. I, I, uh, I, as much as I love the meme, the battle bus, I mean it very seriously. It is the worst hitbox in this game by far. It's terrible. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, it's got the Merc hitbox, which they took out of the game and then brought specifically for the battle bus, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, oh. It's no bueno, but however, it's not really going to matter here as Nubles and Logs and Trees go for a double commit and... This is uh, this is still just as awkward as the last game. It still seems like no one's got a confident touch on the ball yet. Overture trying to put it off the backboard, finding a teammate. Logs and trees denies it. Oh, and what a save there from Neuro, who gets right in front of it and crosses it to the corner. The good thing hey, for Neuro he's... there is he's going to say Go he, he's quick to it. The rotations there are obviously breaking down for Howard. I don't know about you, Voltage, but... I still am a little bit nervous for everyone off of Howard, despite a great save. I don't think that's enough. They need to start rotating better. Ooh. Yeah, they do, but somehow they pull out these shots. Nubel and Logs and Trees work together upfield so well together. And you see it time and time again where it feels awkward and not organized. And then somehow Nubel, just like that, finds Logs and Trees centered. And it just passed it to him in an easy shot for, for logs and trees. So, as Maybe much I as it seems. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking, because I'm over here thinking, what are they doing? But then they pull stuff like together, uh, just, just off to the side there. But what a fantastic shot. Lo I feel like logs and trees is the only one on his game in this lobby right now. Yeah, I do think uh, that Logs and Trees is far and away the best player in this lobby right now. He has just come here today with some authority, not to take anything away from the Carroll uh, from Carroll University, who have really played well so far here, especially in the second game. But I mean, far and away, Logs and Trees is the guy who's elevating this team to another level. Two shots and a goal already. He is the reason they are in the lead here. And the question is, if he becomes even more deadly as the series goes on. What do you do to stop a player like that? You know he's propping his team up. What do you do to stop a specific player like Logs and Trees? Demo, demo, mm -hmm. and and more demos. I mean, you bump him out of the player, you take him out of the game completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, the, it's really the only way. Unless you can control the ball on their end of the field and starve them from boost, where he's not able to go up and contest for aerials, I, I, that's what you're going to have to do if, if if he's the player that's on and say it changes over to Nerd Pulse later on. You've got to figure out who's playing the best and just take them out of the game as we've only seen one demo in the series, or at least to my memory, come out. 
Yeah, so far the demos have not been much of a factor. We saw the demos be a huge factor in the last series we watched here at the NECC, but right now this one's looking a little bit slower paced. I think part of that, though, is that this is actually how Howard wants to play this game now. They've realized that they thrive in this chaos and awkwardness, whereas on the other side, Carol can't seem to catch a break. Nuble gonna put one away, and again, it's through the chaos. Honestly, they're both right next to the ball in the corner, both way too far up. If somebody chips it over them and is able to yeah, get in a 1v2 or 1v1 situation against an Aeropulse, who's probably going to be driving back to net in an awkward situation, it's an easy goal. But somehow, and every time that I feel like they're in a terrible position, a goal comes out for Howard Community College as Nubal takes it off the wall and puts it in himself. I am fully going to say that every single mistake that Nubelson had the first game, all the battle bust, because he has come out here the second game electric, not missing touches, banging on shots here. Matter of fact, he just overtook Logs and Trees for the best player on their team. Third, 380 points, two goals, one assist, and one shot. A somehow 200% shooting uh, record right now. So really just absolutely astonishing how well Nubel is playing right now. Yeah, he, as we saw last week, he is the, the most mechanically minded of this group, while Logs and Trees is going to be the, the rotational awareness person, and Neuropulse is going to be the defensive anchor. So you're really expecting Nubal to be the one with the flashy goals, as they both commit right in front of net and luckily are able to get the 50 and keeping it in front of Carol's net. And back to the chaos we go as all the players just scrambling to get a touch right now. Uh, however, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. We're about one minute left in this game here now. And man, oh man, has this been a dominant performance out of HCC here. Our community college have come into this one not only just as strong as the last game, but I would say their defense has improved significantly, uh, significantly as well, walking away with two saves from Neuropulse here. And they just really haven't had a, or given, I should say, a lot of opportunity to Carol to even take a clean shot. Yeah, no, this is the farthest the ball's been on the HCC side of the field in probably three minutes. And mm -hmm. no Nubles tried to air dribble it out of there, not able to go far. And just a, a, a fantastic shot opportunity there, but they're just there to stop it every time. It just seems to me that they're being outpaced when they get into these positions. As you saw, that ball kind of just dribbled through, uh, I believe it was Overture. Excuse me, it was Overture bringing it to the back. Oh my word, they're going to walk away with a lucky save there. But like I said, I mean, it just seems like they're playing slowly. That ball getting shot at the net. No one jumping on it immediately. The ball through the air getting dribbled back to the uh, uh, to their teammates so that they could pass it. There needs to be a little bit more of a sense of urgency because right now you are just getting outpaced um, by everybody off of Howard Community College. And I don't think that they're getting out like outpaced in skill. I think they're just hesitating. Mm -hmm. their mindset because I, I i think that they can compete if they are putting you know they're, we talk about this every week their rotations that's probably the most important part of this game you i have gotten a diamond without learning how to half flip i am not mechanically minded <laughs> at all but i know when to rotate i know you know i know where to be on the field and i've gotten myself to diamond through solo queuing mm -hmm. so it just if they know when to go when to challenge when to rotate I think that they're going to be a you know a much cleaner team. Yeah, I think run. that I, I think a big thing. I mean, we we mentioned the same three things pretty much every time we get on stream, which are rotations, uh, rotations, power hits, or just having precise touches, not just throwing away your hits, and then confidence in your team. Because those three things alone are really what elevate a team. Your mechanics can be as stellar as you want, but if your mechanics don't come out when it counts, as in you don't have that like mindset to be able to hold on to it, that's not going to matter. You need all three of those working in congruence. Otherwise, you're not going to be uh, be able to go up against a team that's solid. And right now, Howard is the team doing that. Carroll are making mistakes where, they, like you said, their rotations are off because they're hesitating. Their touches aren't that bad, but unfortunately, if you're hesitating, you don't get those touches that often. So so right now, for everybody off of Howard Community College, keep doing what you're doing. And for Carol, tighten up. Just make some minor changes. Like you said, basic Rocket League. Right. As we get into game number three, this is a must win for Carol, or they will be sitting at a 3-4 record at the end of the season here as Nubel from the wall tries to find logs and trees. Never mind. Takes it himself. What? 
Oh my word. We mentioned how you need all three things. You need power, you need confidence, and you need rotations. And Nubel's got all three there. Realizes that he's got a little bit of a shot on net. Puts it perfectly into the right side there. And oh boy, that is not the start that Carol was looking for here. Yeah, and I also like that Logs of Trees didn't overcommit on that. He knew what his teammate was doing there. Ooh, that was an opportunity and a half for Neuropulse. Just getting beat, I, think, I believe, by Overture right in front of the net of Carol. Oh, and there's a wound, but not able to do it. Overture just missing there. Neuro putting it out of his own corner and an awkward fight, but luckily the, uh, the demo saves him. Oh, and I'm still a little bit nervous. I was going to say for a second, it looked like Carol was starting to understand how to possess here, but they're going back to trying to break down the play and slow it down. I don't think they're going to be given the time to do that as much as they would love to slow down the play here. If they do that, Howard's just going to jump on them every single opportunity given. So right now they got to start trying to pick up the pace. Like I, uh, like I said last match, not about pace in terms of how you're playing the match, but straight up just how fast you are playing. Don't hesitate, jump for the ball, and trust that your teammates will be there to cover your rotation. Yeah, I think that they've kind of gotten a little bit of it because every time that the ball's up in the air or uh, going in favor of HCC, there is a there's been a challenge. They might have not hit it, but they've been there to try to contest. So they're and at not least they're letting putting pressure. H right, they're not letting HCC do exactly what they want with the ball. You go up and say you miss, the player is going to think that you are going to hit the ball and they're going to have to do something with it to keep uh, forward presence. So mm -hmm. at that time, the, you, you know, you're making them make awkward plays when you can test like that. As mm -hmm. long as the trees from his own cor from the corner. Oh, no. It just he dances around him, not able to finish. And Neuropulse just takes the roller and says, thank you, logs, and I'll put this in. Oh my word, and that is absolutely the opposite of a high right, uh, highlight reel there for Carol, as they, all three of their players, unfortunately, missing the ball on the line there. That is, uh, that is unfortunately the type of precision that we were saying you were missing. The rotations were fine there, the, the confidence in yourself was fine there, but if your touches just aren't precise, unfortunately, that can be the make or break difference here. And right now it really is as, ooh, I was going to say another missed touch on the line, but for reals able to get a little bit of a piece of that here. That'll get saved the next shot as well. But Howard, again, they're on offense again, and you know that it's eventually going to drop, and it will be Neuropulse the one to do so. Second goal of the game, back-to-back, -back, or series, I should say, for Neuropulse. Finally getting in the offensive action in this game. 3-0 with just over two and a half minutes left, just over half the game gone. I mean, what's the main thing that Carol needs to be focusing on or HCC to be working on for the next game? I mean, the big thing here for, uh, what's it called? The big thing here for HCC is that I believe that if they get this here, that that's it. That's, that's the end of the series. So really right now, it's hold on to what's going on. You guys have all the momentum on your side. You have all the pressure on your side. You're playing pretty much so your top performance right now. Just hold off the onslaught until you have the time. Yeah, they, uh, they, they need to focus on their, when, you know, when they're getting challenged. And to put themselves in a good 50 position as Nero with a third goal in a row with a half trick coming out. He's hot. When he's hot, he's hot. And he's he's hot. I mean, this is just, unfortunately right now, this is kind of just HCC running away with this. Howard Community College, they've played a heck of a series so far. And really, they're comfortable changing out their positions as much as they want. Like you said, Neuropulse, usually he's the defensive-minded one here, but clearly they're changing up their rotations a little bit and giving everybody an opportunity here, as I think Neuro should have... Oh my oh. word, I was going to say another goal. Great save out of Dad here. Maybe Carol can run with this momentum now. Yeah, and I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. All you need is three seconds. So game is definitely not over. It's looking like an uphill battle for Carol. But Dad trying to find a center just too far away from the wall for Logs and Trees to control. Overture hesitates. He needed to contest Nubel on the wall there. Try to keep it on there in, on the HCC side of the field. And he just turns back, tries to play defense. And now it's to the HCC offense that we've come to know and love. And Logs and Trees doesn't stay silent for this one. All three players from HCC scoring a goal. 
It's gonna be 5-0, and it's honestly, at this point, it's looking like it might be too much for Carroll to come back into this game. Yeah, and the big thing about it is is that it's been a solid defense from everyone off HCC as well. There's one thing to be said if this was still the chaotic games that we saw in the beginning, if it was still just as much of the awkwardness and chaos, but it, it really isn't anymore. Howard Community College have come out here, they've started to maintain control, they've gotten more confidence as the, ser uh, as the series has progressed, and now their touches are precise, their defense is on point. It really doesn't look like, even if they give up a single goal here, it doesn't look like they're giving up five. Yeah, I, I'm apparently battle bus is is the way to go if you want it to be chaotic. Oh, touch a redirect from Nuble. Oh my word! It's insane. Speaking of Battle Bus King, so he switched. Maybe that's why he went on the Battle Bus. Just wanted to have the first game where he went, yeah, nah, you guys think that I can't hit a t uh, I can't hit a shot, but hey, check this out. I can hit all of them if you give me the right car. And that he has. Nubal just coming out here with some bangers. Almost gets the double tap off the backboard, but man, this is just, it's a different team right now. ACC looked like a completely different team than what they did the first game. Oh, absolutely. Night and day difference, and it only took three games to get warmed yep. up. I just... I, I'm at a loss for words after that shot from Nubal, to be honest well, with you. I mean, here's the thing. We saw that... We've seen shots out of Nubal like that before. We know he's that confidence. The crazy thing is, it's the last game of the series, and they're still hitting bangers like this. What is this 50? I, I don't know. I, I, you know what? He was the last, he was the second one to the ball and got a great touch on it. From the wall, Neuropulse puts the seventh goal of the game in. So now, this... I mean, the shift of focus becomes what we were talking about last series. So it's clear right now, Howard Community College are going to be the ones to take the victory here in this series. That's a huge thing. But this is a statement for playoffs. You're going to see Carroll again in playoffs. Carroll, like going? we said previously, a solid team. They're 3-3. Three and three. They've had a good season so far here, but they are not able to take the win away here. So HCC walks away with a 3-0 sweep here. And not only they walk away with a sweep, they walk away with a statement to every other team they'll be facing in playoffs. I think I just saw Nubal and Logs and Trees try to get the Brazil before. That's why I kept part of it. Uh <laughs> they I, they both brought it in front of their own net and then both tried to turn towards their net with the ball. I was yeah. blown away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, th this is going to be a just. I mean, this is a team to watch. We mentioned it previously. There are not many undefeated teams left in the league. We've got one in this division as well as two in the other division. Uh, but the big thing here now for everybody uh, um off of uh off of Howard Community College is. They want to be that first loss against Montana. They want to beat Montana in the playoffs, and they want to make a statement that that one loss they have in the season, it does not matter. They want that revenge. They want that comeback. And I think they'll have a good shot at that in playoffs. They've played extremely well so far. Yeah, and going back to what we've said for two weeks about HCC, it's the game that I've casted two weeks in a row now. It's If their rotations are on point, then I think that they have a chance to win against Montana, against some of the challenge, or the champion teams. And I, they're really just a, they're a solid team that have some mistakes at times, as we saw in the first game. Yeah, I think the big thing is about getting warmed up in the series. We mention it pretty much every single series for a reason, because of the fact that it really does take these teams a little bit of time to get into a comfortable state where not only is their, uh, what is it, positioning and their, uh, what is it, their positioning and their touch getting into it, but just mentally being able to prepare for what could be a potentially 45 minute series where at any moment you don't know what's going on. But that was not the case today. How community college knew no. what was going on. There's even through the chaos, they were clearly the team in control and they played a great series overall. Yeah, it, it was a fantastic series. And I want to say thank both schools for coming out and competing. And I'm looking forward to see both of them in the playoffs. Absolutely. I think this is going to be a uh, it's going to be an incredible playoff. So you guys make sure to stick around because uh, we're going to have plenty of games coming for you guys throughout the entirety of the playoffs. We've got over 30 of our 40 uh, of our over 40 matches that are going to be streamed here on the NECC. But speaking of which, we've also got some other places that you're going to be able to to check out these matches. So a shout out to our sponsors. So we'll start off with ESTV, our linear TV provider. Make sure to go check them out on the Roku channel, Samsung TV and everywhere else that they stream. 
stream, bringing you esports action from around the globe 24 7. So make sure to go check them out. In addition, Helix, Helix Esports, we want to give a shout out to them as well for everything they do behind the scenes. We really appreciate you guys' help. And finally, HyperX, like we said before, best game the best gear in gaming is coming to the necc and it has arrived again huge shout out to them for the all of the headphones that they have sent out to our casters this week we greatly appreciate it you see voltage rocking them you see me rocking them you saw jaron rocking them earlier today so make sure to go check out hyper x and uh in addition to that we want to give a shout out to everybody also who works here at the NECC. So a quick shout out to Caleb Gluby, our director of esports, and as well, our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan, for allowing us to be here tonight. So shout out to Jacob Van Ryan and to Caleb Gluby. Thank you to both of them for all of their help around uh, the NECC. And Voltage, we want to give a shout out to you as well. So thank you, you, my guy, for coming here and casting with me today. I appreciate you coming through. I'm excited for the playoffs. I don't know about you, my guy. I'm super excited. And uh, like always, I appreciate the uh, the knowledge that you bring to the table every week when we cast together. So it's a pleasure. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here with you, and I'm hoping to see you back for playoffs, my guy. Like we said, guys, we've got plenty of playoffs games coming up in the next couple weeks, so please do stick around the NECC so you can catch all of the action. Make sure to check us out on ESTV if you're not watching on Twitch or Facebook. So thank you again, guys. That has been it for, well, what will be the regular season for the NECC uh, here at... Uh, here at the NECC. We appreciate you guys coming through. So uh, we've got Valorant next week. So that's going to be the first thing. So please make sure to check out that. And uh, th that'll be it. Thank you guys so much for coming through here today. I really, really do appreciate it. Make sure to ca catch our schedule and we will see all of you guys next time.